This is Juan Brown with the latest update on the Oroville situation. It's Thursday, the 16th of February, about 6.30 in the morning local time. I've just watched all the news I could find and uh, Bill Croyle's uh, um, briefing yesterday with the Department of Water Resources and got a lot of good information to pass on. I've also got some good video clips to share with you as well, so let's check it out. But first I want to do a little PSA, a little public service announcement about uh, TFRs and the use of drones in the area. The video footage I'm going to share with you is not mine. It's stuff I've gotten uh, off of the internet. There's plenty of good video footage available out there to use. Uh, we don't need to go in there and get any of our own video footage at the moment. A TFR, a temporary flight restriction, is designed to keep aircraft operating safely over the emergency zone. There's a lot of airplanes and um, drones being used right now for the emergency. They don't need the rest of us in there messing up that situation. A TFR also allows safe entry for media to get in there and explain the story. So it's not like they're trying to keep us out and hide anything from us. No, that allows a media to get in there and get a good close look safely at the operation. So you can grab that footage and use it if you need to for any of your personal YouTube reports. Here's what a TFR looks like. Uh, this is a uh, skyvector.com. This is a, what's called a VFR sectional chart for pilots. This red box right over the Oroville Dam is the TFR and you can see it's uh, from the surface up to 4,500 feet MSL, that's above sea level, for 86 days. And if you click on this, there's all the data and a point of contact. So if you really... So keep your drones and your light airplanes out of the TFR. And this is why... Um, the FAA is getting to the point where they're going to start mandating drone operators to have some sort of a drone operator's license so, so that you understand basic airspace rules like this. The mandatory evacuation was lifted back in uh, on Tuesday and now it's simply a voluntary evacuation. And if you're in the affected area, here's some important information you should keep an eye on to help yourself make a decision as to what to do. 850 feet is the mandated flood control number for Oroville Dam. Remember, a dam's first purpose in life is for flood control. Water containment for uh, irrigation and drinking water is its secondary uh, purpose in life, and of course, recreating and water skiing the third. So flood control is the primary reason we have these dams in place in the first place. The Army Corps of Engineers mandates uh, the flood control level that a reservoir is supposed to be maintained at, a certain percentage, to allow for major rain events like this. For Oroville Dam, that number is 850 feet, and they're going to reach that number pretty quick. The levels are dropping at a rate of about 8 inches per hour at an outflow rate of the main busted spillway of 100,000 cubic feet per second. So let's look at this chart and see how this works. This column is the date, here's today's date. This column is the time, here's the most recent time at the bottom. Here's the reservoir elevation steadily dropping from 874 down to 869, that's 31 feet below the, the top of the emergency spillway. Storage in acre feet, outflow cubic feet per second. Look at that, a steady nearly 100,000 cubic feet per second, that's about an Olympic swimming pool per second worth of water coming out of the busted main spillway. Inflows, this varies wildly. This is what we're watching with the weather constantly. You can even see the diurnal changes from day and night as uh, things freeze up in the mountains and then warm up and melt during the day. Right now this morning it's down to a mere 13,000 cubic feet per second. We'll talk about the weather here in a minute then the coming rain. Uh, here's the oh, total rainfall uh, there at the uh, dam site, and we are receiving rain right now from a fast-moving cold front blowing through, and that number is up. And that's just the battery voltage of the unit that's taking the data. Here's that fast-moving cold front moving through the area right now. Fairly high snow level on this. More rain expected on Friday. We'll uh, be raining mostly to the south of this area. What we're more concerned about is uh, rain on the horizon for next week, but it's a little too far out for those models to see how much rain they're going to produce yet. So we got to make room in the reservoir for future rain. With the weather coming in over the next week being more seasonal, managers are not expecting the inflow to Oroville to exceed 40,000 cubic feet per second. A much more manageable inflow than the upwards of nearly 150, almost 200 cubic 
thousand cubic feet per second during the huge rains we had recently. Here's my friend Tim O'Brien's picture from a couple of days ago when the water was still pouring over the emergency spillway. The big takeaways from yesterday's briefing from DWR was this break is basically stabilized. This situation has been stable for over four days now and this erosion is stopped right here and is no longer head cutting up. So this main spillway is going to continue to release water at 100,000 cubic feet per second until it gets close to that 850 foot level and then they're going to reduce the output of this spillway to avoid tearing up this infrastructure anymore. There is no repair going on at this time of this structure. All the effort and work of repair is going on over here at the emergency spillway. All that helicopter work and dumping of rocks is going on right along here to reinforce this emergency spillway. Again, they're going back to plan A and plan on just keeping the water level low enough using this spillway to avoid having to use the emergency spillway. But in the meantime, they're repairing this emergency spillway. So if in the event some unfortunate sequence of events should happen to compromise this spillway, the emergency spillway may be used once again. So they're dropping 1,200 uh, 1200 tons, what is that, 1,200 tons of rock per hour into this area, this eroded area below the base of the emergency spillway. They're using a combination of crushed rock and shot creek, shot crete um, to glue it all together using helicopters, dump trucks, construction crews, whatever they can get in there to shore that area up. They're also... Uh, cutting the lines of the main transmission power lines and moving those power lines out of harm's way in an effort to get the power plant going again, which is still, I believe, not running due to debris backing up from the Thermalito diversion pool. I just want to reemphasize the big picture here. Here's the main or busted spillway location. Here's the emergency spillway location. And here's the location of the main dam at Oroville. All this that we're talking about involves this area over here and at this point has nothing to do with the main dam. There so far is no problems with the main dam that we're presently aware of. You can also see in this Google satellite view how shallow the water is in front of the emergency spillway. And of course that was the reason for the emergency evacuation was in the event that this emergency spillway were to fail due to excessive erosion over here, it was going to dump this good 20 plus foot of water suddenly into the Thermalito diversion pool. So remember, it was an unprecedented record breaking amount of rainfall that got us into this situation this season to begin with. We've got a nice, we've had a nice break in the weather and the weather that's happening right now is a more normal winter sort of pattern. So this will allow the managers to continue to lower the water level at Oroville. And even though more rain is on the horizon, don't be surprised if they reduce the outflow, once they reach that 850 foot level, if they reduce the outflow of the spillway, to more closely match the inflow of the water coming in and balance the reservoir right at 850 feet. And that'll go a long way to reduce the impact on the busted spillway. Another concern that they have about the spillway is possible damage that we can't see under the water in front of the spillway. In front of the spillway, it's not flat. It's got a channel leading into the uh, gates for the powerhouse and the spillway and that underwater channel that underwater channel uh, has limits to how much water you can flow through there uh, especially as the water level continues to drop on the reservoir so that's another reason you're going to see a reduction of outflows once they balance the reservoir at 850 feet so now let's check out some of this cool video footage i found online and see if i can help make some sense of it Here's some very dramatic and shaky home footage of the emergency spillway when it first really got moving, forming its own river canyon down below the emergency spillway. I heard they were yeah, taking out like um, logs and stuff that were in the way of the um, 
emergency spillway. Emergency but spillway. yeah, maybe yeah. They, they could have been using the uh, the the um, helicopters as, for logging. Look, look at all that, look bro. The trees out. Look at that. Brown water here is flowing over the access road to the boat ramp, which subsequently failed. You should exchange numbers with her and then you can send them. And the big wall of white water there in the background is the emergency spillway. Live Copper 3 out of Sacramento later that evening at the peak of the mandatory evacuation. There's the main spillway thundering along at 100,000 CFS right at the broken spot there. And the overflow of the emergency spillway. Now you can get a much clearer view of the erosion, the subsequent erosion that took place and that access road is gone. In my previous video, I mistakenly called the, these two deep pockets boils. It's not technically a boil of water. That's just plain erosion from all the way to that water. Hard to get a grasp of the scale of this, but there's the edge of the uh, busted roadway on the left, and the subsequent video clip I show will give you a better sense of how big, how deep this erosion really is. Here's the water forming its own river canyon as it departs the emergency spillway and heads down into the Thermalito diversion pool below. Well, let's take a look at that. Andrew, if you'll come out, go up and to the left and look at the... This is the far end of the Thermalito diversion pool and dam holding back all this debris flowing down from, uh, from the emergency spillway right there in the town of Oroville. This water then heads into the Feather River or becomes the Feather River and merges with the Sacramento River downstream. Here's the traffic departing the Oroville area during the mandatory evacuation. Here's some dramatic footage that shows you, gives you a sense of the size and scale of this erosion over the emergency spillway as these guys crawl down in the canyons and check them out. Of course, this is after the water level has dropped enough and the water no longer was flowing over the emergency spillway. Top of the screen, that gray area is an example of the recent rock and shock creek repair. There it is on the left. That's the kind of repair they're continuing with today. Here comes our friend from PJ Helicopters in Redding, California with the Black Hawk, civilianized Black Hawk helicopters on a long line sling dropping rocks into the damaged area, into the eroded areas. really only have room for two helicopters to operate in this small piece of airspace. Here comes more truckloads of native rock to be dumped into the Roaded areas and an effort to armor up the emergency spillway. If they, can, if they can just get this armored up near the spillway and keep the erosion away from the spillway, that's what they're trying to do.
So we'll wrap this up with a couple of great Tim O'Brien shots. Here's the uh, emergency spillway as it was uh, flowing over and a couple days later after the water level had been reduced, exposing the erosion below, below the emergency spillway. To the folks in the affected areas, keep your eye on the weather and the local news. Keep track of these numbers, what's going on at the Orville Reservoir.